Julian, tell me what is your idea of time? It's very simple. Time doesn't exist at all. In the world that we find around us and experience, certainly time is something which is derived from motion. If there is no motion in the universe, if things aren't changing, you couldn't possibly say that time passed. To tell the time from the clock, you have to look and see how far the hands have moved on, things like that. But there is also quantum mechanics to take into account. Quantum mechanics describes, as we have it now, how atoms behave, basically. But people are trying to extend quantum mechanics to the whole universe. And one possibility suggests quite strongly that the quantum mechanics of the entire universe is completely static. Nothing changes at all. You just have a whole collection of snapshots of the universe, configurations just like that, so to speak, lying in a heap. And I think then what is time is actually something we deduce from the structure of those snapshots. After all, think of the picture of the two of us. It tells a lot about time. We are looking at each other intently. That means we're having a discussion. It's obvious you are younger than me and all sorts of things like that. So the image reeks of time. And I think that is at the deepest level what time is. It's actually a structure in static configurations which gives the impression of time. So you use the, the word time capsule to identify this concept? That's right. A time capsule is, in its normal meaning, is something generally that's uh, left in the foundations of a house when it's built with characteristic objects from that age. I don't mean that at all. The best example I know of a time capsule is what the geologists worked out. 200 years ago, when people still thought that the Earth had been created 6,000 years ago, geologists started looking very carefully at rocks and fossils and looking at the correlations between them. And then, like good scientists, they said, how can we explain these correlations? And they slowly came to the conviction that the Earth, as they then found it, must be the outcome of an immensely long process that had taken place in time in accordance with laws, leaving a whole lot of mutually consistent records. So for me, the whole Earth is one huge time capsule in that sense. Let's move from time to shape. What is shape for you? Shape is very simple. Well, I can give you the simplest example here. Uh, this, this is a triangle. The triangle has a size, which depends upon the scale. It also has a shape, which is just determined by two angles. And it's really obvious, if you think about it, that the shape is much more significant than the size. We can imagine the triangle blown up and reduced, but nothing really characteristic about the triangle is changed. And in particular, if this was the whole universe, it would be utterly meaningless to say that it has a size because there's nothing outside that universe of the triangle to measure its size. But the, the angles still remain meaningful. So I think actually science is really about the shape of the universe. This is an utterly simple toy model of the universe, but it characterizes my way of thinking about the universe. It's about shapes. So why a shape dynamics theory? Because in Newtonian theory, which many people still think is, is, they still have a very Newtonian way of thinking, many physicists still, Newton imagined that there was a space in addition to the triangle, that there was something he called absolute space, and this triangle would be at any instant at a definite position in space, and also time would be passing inexorably. And I think this is just straight wrong. All we can actually ever observe is shapes of things and one shape follows another. So shape dynamics is my aspiration for how one should describe the universe. Julian, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.